Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Inc., New York's Window Company, New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional funding is provided by grants from Briarwood Organization, Beechwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Friedman, LLP, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Jack Jaffa and Associates, Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Markham LLP, Marcus and Millichap, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, M&T Bank, Meridian Capital Group, The Moynian Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Orphanides and Associates, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, The Wickoff Group. Hello, my name is Michael Stoller. So we're here in the spring of 2010. People think that the world is getting better. My friend Dr. Sam Chandon, prominent economist for Real Capital Analytics says, we're out of the recession, world is getting better. Bruce Mosler, uh, speaking at my panel, said the world is getting better, we've reached the bottom. Is the world getting better? Is my apple polished? Is it better? So today I have four distinguished individuals who are going to give me their insight on the state of the world, the state of the real estate market and the economy. My guests, they include Jeff Levine, real estate partner at the accounting firm of Margolin, Weiner & Evans, LLP, uh, Tom Leiden, president of the City Investment Fund, uh, Peter Duncan, uh, the president and CEO of George Comfort & Sons, and last but not least, my good friend Jim Orfanides, the president of Centurion Holdings. So James, you're, you're sometimes an optimist. Is it getting better? Is my apple polished? It's going to be a good spring of 2010? Michael, I am always an optimist. I'm sitting on the right side of the turf. That's, it starts there. I, I agree. That you, <laughs> as long as we're on the, this side of the grass as opposed we're, to the other side of the right. grass, it, it's much better. <laughs> okay. But how do you look at it, been involved in the real estate and the economy for the last 40 years? How do you look at it? Are, are we, are we, have we reached the better sign? What do you see? Are you, you want me to give you the demarcation? Are we at the end? Are we in the middle? Are we still I want you to just give me your thoughts. We're not, we're not at the end. There's still going to be some more displacement and things have got, they may still get a little worse before they get better. And the obvious issue would be, where are the jobs going to come from? That's, let's start with the basics. And you know, the government is involved everywhere. The government is growing faster than any other part of the segment of the, of the entire economy. That's not a good sign. Where are the business leaders? Where's the small businessman that's going to do the hiring? I, I worry about that before I would worry about some of the other issues. Those other issues that <coughs> might come up, in particular in our world here in New York in the real estate industry, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll settle out because that's, that's, there's a lot of smart people. But um, I would say that the optimism would be that the, the business people that are all around us, especially in this town, this great city, uh, let, them, let them do their job. And, and let's have a little less interference. Now, now here's the interesting, you know, George Comfort and Sons are, are owners of all types of, uh, in the asset class of uh, office, uh, buildings, uh, retail, and other properties in New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles. How do you see it uh, for your portfolio? I mean, you're in New York City, you're in Stanford, you're in Princeton, you're in Philadelphia, and you're in Los Angeles. How do you, how do you see the different markets, you know, with regard to, you know, the lack of jobs, the fact that some of these companies aren't hiring, people have retrenched some of their office needs to try to save things. Where do you see it? Well, I, you know, it's 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 tough right now. I mean, the um, we're uh, 
where we have vacancies in our portfolio, we're aggressively trying to fill them. Um, but having said that, I mean, um, I, I too am an optimist. It, you can't be in this business uh, without being, you know, being an optimist. And uh, we are seeing, you know, we're seeing a fair amount of activity. Um, it's uh, are, are people. I, I remember last year, you know, people would say, "Yeah, I'll, I'll look at space." I mean, there was a lot of space leased in two thousand and nine, <clears throat> but some of it was leased at prices <clears throat> which were really very special. Are people still saying, "I want that bargain. I really want that deal"? Well, I, look, I, I think there's a lot of that. There's a lot of people out there looking, and, and, and rightfully so. They should be. Um, but on the other side of the coin, I mean, people do have to uh, have homes for their operation, and in companies, uh, there are companies that um, appear to th that they're going to grow and are thinking that they're going to grow, and so they're looking for new homes and new opportunities. And you know, the, the one saving grace we do have in this city, quite frankly, is we haven't had a tremendous amount of addition to our commercial stock in the past 20 years, if you really look at it. So we do have vacancy, we, we, uh, which we have to grind through, but, but we're going to grind through it. Now, but you have properties in Los Angeles. How are they seeing the market? You know, it's a little bit different out there because our, our um, assets are in Beverly Hills, California, and the, we're tied into uh, the entertainment world quite a bit. Um, but I, I will tell you, after an incredibly slow second half of 2008 and, and really n very little activity in 2009 and uh, the one asset that had uh, available space, we have seen a, a huge pickup in activity. And um, I don't know what that means. Uh, you know, I think people are out there uh, hunting for bargains. That's, that is for sure. But I think things are starting to move and the ice is starting to break a little bit. Speaking of papari of uh, you know of products, you own land in Coney Island, apartments in Manhattan and the Bronx, uh, office buildings in Manhattan and in Brooklyn, uh, a variety of other things all in the five boroughs. In certain, of, you have in every one of the boroughs. Every one of the boroughs. Every one of the boroughs. So how do you see this world? And and you've been around the world a couple of times. Uh, well, I think I've been. This is my fourth real estate recession, but I call this a real estate depression. It's not just a recession because the losses that will be taken to both financial institutions and owners are going to be massive. And the dislocation is, uh, you know, far more than just a, a bump in the economic cycle. And we still have a long way to go on that whole process for the excesses of three or four or five years. Uh, in order to get back to a basis in real estate so that you can afford to lease office space where there is activity at an economic level, you know, it's still a lot of losses to be taken by both equity holders and lenders. But the key thing is the fundamentals. And I think 2010 will be a little bit better than 2009. You had to look at 2009, we were coming out of a financial worldwide crisis, but especially here in New York and Wall Street and, and the Lehman bankruptcy and, and Bear Stearns going away. So I, in some of our properties, such as a hotel we own in Times Square, the occupancy is 20 points higher than it was first quarter last year. Now the room rates are slightly higher, so still you're not getting the return on the investment, but you know there's still there there is a good active uh, demand for hotel rooms but in New York. But 2007 and 2008, where the, there was irrational exuberance in the hotel business. You know, the people never thought they'd get these prices. I mean, you even well, when you not through all 2008. It ended about uh, <coughs> Labor Day. <laughs> Michael, Michael, Labor Day. Greenspan, just uh, irrational exuberance. Just no, when no, we no, reopened the, sure. the uh, Crown Plaza Hotel after spending 75 million dollars on Labor Day, uh, you know, 2008. It all went downhill from there, but uh, in, in the residential sales market, we're selling condominiums. There are now buyers. If you price your product correctly, there are buyers. Difficult to finance. That I, wasn't I, happening I a year ago. I think that's an interesting thing, and I think Jeff has clients like that, and we've seen, you know, because I did a couple of shows with Vinnie Rizzo and some other people recently, <coughs> and the buyers are, are having difficulties in getting mortgages. It, it's that's, just, a, that's a serious that's problem. That's a serious problem. Serious I mean, problem, and uh, especially if you're in unusual situations of development deals that aren't 50 percent sold or 70 percent sold. Absolutely. It's a dilemma where you have to, you know, s close a certain number of units before you can get access to low-cost financing through Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, and that 
is causing a dilemma that we're trying to sort through in a couple of our properties. And that means you have to get very creative and you have to find people who can put down lots of equity. But there are, New York is still has a lot of people, even after the financial crisis, who do have net worth. And you, again, you have to come back to price the product for value, then you can move it. That, that I think uh, the condo inventory is being absorbed in Manhattan quite nicely. In Brooklyn, the supply is much greater a lot of those projects, again, are turning rental or quasi-rental and condo, and it's going to take longer, you know, to do that. But, I, you know, I, th I think, again, 2010 will be a slight improvement, but we still have a long way to go in the fundamentals. Uh, Mr. Levine, you've gone through the four cycles in real estate. Uh, uh, only upsides. <coughs> only, only upsides. <laughs> now, but you have clients, I mean, you have one client who's building a lot of condominiums in New York City. You, you have clients who are in retail. You have clients, you know, George, uh, I mean, P Peter's thing. How do you look at it? They, you know, are your clients bitching? Or, I mean, are they feeling difficult? I mean, are the banks cooperating with them? My what clients are, are the salt of the earth. They never bitch. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> we, we whine. <laughs> <laughs> but l let's take Jim's comment because it's interesting. I listen to the talk shows. I listened to the politicians talking, and the government bailed out all the banks. And they start bitching and moaning about bonuses. And they make it on stock, and they're restricted. What everybody fails to mention is that when you load it up with stock, and it's not available to spend, there's no money going into the economy. Now, I heard something two, three weeks ago where they said, no, 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 they don't get it. They don't pay taxes on it. The corporations pay tax. But that's not the issue. There's no money being spent in the economy. You go and buy a co-op that's on a resale, a condo on a resale, everybody's doing the kitchens, everybody's doing bathrooms, and now you have people working. You lease out new space, everybody has to get the tenant improvement work. Now you have your contractors working. We talk of the hotels, and yes, the, the average daily rates are down, everything is going, but I'm hearing optimism. Maybe it's false. Projects going to special servicing, okay, let's push it off. Let's see what happens in three years. Do you delay it? Or is that reality? But if we continue to lease space, sell space, you're going to get money into the economy. You mentioned about condominiums and getting marketing uh, financing available for it. There are two groups coming into the U.S., which I'm aware of, that hasn't been signed yet, but is being worked on, to provide financing for those cases. Maybe they'll require 50 percent down, 25 percent down. And maybe the construction lender will take the 25 percent turn into a MES loan. Everybody's looking at opportunities. Maybe the euphoria is false, but hell, it's better than it was a year ago. You know, about a year ago, I, I, I'm, I was in Washington at a think tank of about 20 people, and I, there was a very bright economist from the Heritage Foundation, and <clears throat> he said, you're going to see a recovery, and then you're going to see in 2010 a major problem at coming back. And you know, part of it is, you know, you can print a lot of money, and you can do Ob Obama land and this and that, you know, April 30th is the end of the new tax credit, the new home tax credit. Now, it, for New York City, for Manhattan, it really didn't have any effect because if it was up to $800,000. Now, it did have an effect on some units in Brooklyn, you know, which would be sold, you know, to Connex Development with Apollo. In Jersey and City, I think it had a It had some effect, but so that's gone. So, th and how many more times? They renewed it once, you know, what, what are we, what we going to do? Another th investment tax credit of the 80s, you know, over there. How are we going to, you know, how are we going to get things going again? I mean, you, you're, you're in, you know, you bought World Red Plaza. You couldn't have bought, you couldn't build that building for that price today. No. Uh, there, there is no way. Good point. Um, People bought four New York Plaza for $97 a square foot. I had him on a panel. Uh, but there's new buildings going up in lower, in lower Manhattan. Brooklyn is having problems on this. How, I mean, how do we see the market? I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, you're a well-capitalized 
company. You have good investors who have been in business. You've been around 70 years, so it's a different case. You have the city funds. You have other people. What happens to the person who's undercapitalized? You know, they go to him and they can get money, but what, what about your clients who aren't the strong companies, Mr. Levine? There's plenty of money around. There's money sitting on the sidelines that is looking to come in. Of course, no different than the tenant trying to steal space at $10 a square foot. The investor is also okay. looking for the fabulous return and buying the property at the right price. Things will happen. Because so, who stuck with these properties? If you consider existing properties with debt, where are the banks going with this debt? Are they selling their debt? And that's what I'm seeing happening. We're currently in negotiation with a life insurance company to take a 30% haircut on their debt. It'll happen. I think, you know, how, how do you see it? Do you, do you see banks this year taking the hits? Last year, I, I think in 2009, they weren't taking the hits. They were waiting for more profit, you know, so you can spread it out over a couple of years. Do you see that happening? Well, you know, Tom was articulating it, and when right before we came in here, we were just briefly talking about it. Uh, we wonder why there has not been some of the balance sheet momentum to just clean up some of the portfolio and move it. I think, quite honestly, even with the TARP and with the government's involvement, and again, I'm going to go back to this point, I think the message has been so lack of clarity that business executives and business people are waiting to have clear rules, clear definition, a clear understanding of where it's going to be and what's going to be the consequences if they make the next two or three steps. Let them get some real good guidelines. Let the government take the real tough task of making definitive lines and definitive statements and let the business people go back to their jobs of, of rebuilding and restarting the economy. The government can't do it, and you, we have to stop this Wall Street bashing. It's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Wall Street did not cause this recession. That is not what is the cause of this recession. And if we want to look at it, all of us can say we can all blame, and, but then we could all say we're all part of the solution. Please, this is, this is not the time to think about what's going to be this or that. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities. In some parts of the country, if you were trying to say there was the $10 a square foot tenant, you might want that tenant if it was a Walmart that might attract 14 other yeah, tenants but, to your site. Okay. Think about it. Uh, there's I, quality out there. There's a, there's a quality measure in everything. We seem to only want to quantify things, Mike. Let's talk about the quality of things. And that's important. And right now in New York City, we still have a little bit of a quality of life. But there are way too many people that are very nervous and uncertain about what they can expect. And they're holding on because they're waiting for those clear signals. And they are waiting to see that there is a true optimism, uh, not just on a certain group of people, but all of us. So they're that cautious optimism. Well, I, I, also, think, uh, I also think, too, that there's a little bit of, um, you know, everybody's trying to move things down the road a little bit to before taking care of their problems and you know in some of these situations um, you know there's reserves that are still in place there you know and people are trying to hopefully see the leasing market turn a little bit um, and you know and I and I do think there is a, I agree with Jeff there's a tremendous amount of money sitting on the sidelines um, watching and, and wanting to watching come in. and maybe waiting well, that's, de de definitely that, that's that's the point. Well, are, are they waiting. ready to, to to shell it out, or are they well, still that, waiting? Remember that money. A lot of those people with that money have made some major mistakes themselves, oh. and they don't want to go out with their investors, who are big pension plans, exactly. and go buy something and then face a an, another write down. The because they have problems in their existing portfolios, they're trying to convince the investors they have under control. So yeah. no one wants to be that guy to stick his neck out too much and, and once one person does it all of a sudden other people will do it and I think one of the other reasons things move slowly we're in the reason there's a difference I think between a recession and a real estate depression it's when you have a situation when you have borrowers of real estate who generally are weak today for the for the most part but the lender to the project may be in worse financial shape than the borrower so it creates a uh, you know a double-edged situation where no one can make decisions and you have banks who are under government control, who are really just don't want to face up to making the key decisions to foreclose, extend, and it's just slowing down the whole process. One point four trillion banks. dollars of debt comes due over the next three years. 
where there's not there's some CMBS. There were three CMBS deals done last year. Nothing has been done in the first two months of this year. There is some money and some conduit loans. You know, Goldman Sachs is offering conduit loans. Uh, uh, J.P. Morgan is offering, and they're trying to put them together. But you know, the underwriting is much harder. The loan to value is different. Uh, the all the conditions aren't there. How are your clients going to get financing? Well. If they're buying new properties with difficulty, but with putting in more equity. If they're talking about refinancing the existing mortgage, putting in more capital, or going back to the way it was in the 90s. And you go to your bank and you say, hello, partner. I'll, I'll give, give a good <coughs> example. Your partner in one of your buildings, not in your building, uh, happens to be the case. And the case, uh, SATQ, uh, owned 1515 Broadway. They had a $625 million mortgage, and they refinanced it for $475 million. Somebody had to come up with $150 million. So you know, somebody had to step up to the plate because the property, they couldn't get a mortgage for that. Well, that, that's, I mean, really, the bottom line is you can get financing. Um, and there's, and I think there's a lot of the... Uh, <laughs> A lot of the balance sheet <coughs> lenders are really coming back uh, together, and you're and you're able to on the larger loans. You're able to put syndicated bank deals together, which you couldn't last year uh, in two, the end of 2000. And well, we did, but it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. um, but the um, but the but the bottom line is is everything things have changed. You know, your your 65 percent LTV or are, are lower. Your, um, you know, your coverage uh, requirements are are much 11, tighter. 11, 12 percent. Um, service, so that reserve accounts, then there's yeah. reserve accounts, and there's all this, and and really, what's happening is that you're also you're either having to, because of the LTVs, you're either having to do very heavy amortization because what these guys are now looking for, uh, to is how they're going to refinance out their position five years from now or three years from now or whatever the length of the, of the loan is, and you know, and rightfully so. I, I just think we're you know the the things have changed, and the days of 95 percent or 85 percent IO only loans are. They don't exist, and so, you know, there was a feeding frenzy there for a while, and, and now it's going to take a while to clean up. I, I think part of the issue that you do have, though, is that um, with this is that there was a significant amount of uh, CMBS financing done out there, and um, so you're not dealing, you know, you're not picking up the phone and calling your uh, your 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 friend at the at the bank that you can talk that you can talk to. I mean, because you know, you're, you're basically you're, you're speaking to groups that are um, uh, representing a, a bunch of different bondholders, and um, and these, you know, they're representing a whole pool of loans. It's not a single loan, and so you know, all the dynamics that have changed when you have to have to deal with that. So it's. It, it's not as easy, and I don't think everybody's worked out. You know, you're wondering why things aren't moving. I don't think everybody's kind of worked out how that's gonna, you know, where it's that's gonna, gonna be fall almost, out. It's almost on each deal. You read, each right. deal has where they place this. It's almost as if we put a title impediment on the real estate to make it less valuable because of the financing. It's like, you know, you used to buy assumable financing that made it more valuable. I think some of these structures <laughs> actually reduce the value of the property because you can't easily get to a restructure because of where they place these notes. And I was just reading something yesterday that I just got a chuckle of where, you know, I know quite a bit about real estate finance and have done it. I couldn't understand at all what had been done. And the people actually who will benefit from that are the investment bankers who got laid off along with the lawyers who structured that. They'll be buying these pieces up and then reselling them. But I think Peter's comment, all it does is mean even if the world's getting a little better, it's going to take a long time. Yeah. But it's, I, it's, not, it's not that dissimilar to, I remember sitting in 1988 and 89 sure. with Japanese bank syndications, okay, and th the banks were broke. We didn't realize that the banks were broke uh, because you weren't familiar with Japan and they were going, and it would take 16 banks, it would take forever to get through that negotiation. Now it's sure. just something called CMBS or it's a German bank or an Irish bank or a right. you know, Royal Bank or something. And you know it, the decision makers. You don't know where they are. You don't know where to go, and it'll take slower. It's very hard, but the losses have to be taken. These I aren't going to. I want to ask a specific question of you because you you own rent regulated apartments. Have rents dropped in the rent regulated apartments in the outer boroughs? No, they have not. Every every apartment that we renovate in Brooklyn or Bronx is leased upon completion, and the 
incremental return on renovating that apartment from the vacancy is 30, 40 percent. Now, I wish to say our investment return was that we actually paid too much going in for it, but basically we're earning our way out by these turnovers that are mostly not, they're all natural uh, type of turnovers, but they rent immediately because they're still below what, you know, a, a, an open market would be, and they're just middle class workforce housing type of thing. So uh, from a vacancy standpoint, that's not an issue. It's just that that market too, when you were paying five times the rent roll, that was the proper price to pay. You shouldn't have paid eight times the rent roll, at least in Bronx and Brooklyn. So you got to work your way back, but there's still financing. You can sell it. We're selling a couple of properties at 10 times, in Brooklyn uh, at 10 times. Uh, and there's financing available from the local savings banks. Local savings banks have more money than at very I mean, at very reasonable at rates. Very, I mean, I, I was, are they aggressively <coughs> lending? Yeah, they are. The local savings banks are aggressively lending. They've un they've changed their underwriting a little bit, uh, but there's a new bank, a New Jersey bank called Investor Savings. They opened up a loan production office with six individuals. They're offering five, seven, and ten year money with a 30-year amortization, and 10-year money they're offering it at 599 That's very uh, fair. I, I mean, that's, that's fair. a very aggressive rate, and, you Good. know, <clears throat> so there, there is money from multifamily. Now, the other big boys in the multifamily are still there, but they're, they've under, they, the 120 debt service coverage is 130 now, and, you know, there's no, nothing for the future that, oh, I'm going to get that type of rent. Tell me what the rent is right. today. They're not going to buy, they're not going to buy into vacancy, they're not going to give any credit for vacancy. It used to be they'd actually lend you money to renovate to the break and so it's used to be a big benefit. Yeah. Well, remember, real estate did not start this recession, and real estate always has been behind the economy. We're not an industry maker, we're an industry, we're part of the industry and a big part of the, the, the economy. But to blame real estate for this recession so, is a so mistake. So in a quick, quick thing, to the, how, the end of 2010, we're in much better shape or? Uh, After the elections, I think we'll be in much better shape. I would agree with that. Thomas. Yeah, yeah, but also there's lots of positives. Look at uh, super senior CMBS debt. People have doubled their money in one year, and, and hey, the answer's you know been what? a lot of money Time, made. Timing uh, is everything. I think in. we'll be much better off, however. I think the pain is still going to be awaiting us. And with that pain awaiting, I'd like to thank my four guests, Jeff Levine, Tom Lydon, Peter Duncan, and Jim Orfaniti. See you next week. Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Inc., New York's Window Company, New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional funding is provided by grants from Briarwood Organization, Beechwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Friedman LLP, Gemini Real Estate Advisors LLC, Jack Jaffa and Associates Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Markham LLP, Marcus and Millichap, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, M&T Bank, Meridian Capital Group, The Moynian Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Orphanides and Associates, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, The Wickoff Group. Thank you.